Welcome to Volume 2, Chapter 7 of the Power Narrative Podcast. Watch your mouth and consider the source. I am your host, B. Green, a.k.a. Belief Narrative, empowering you through the power of awareness, inspiration, and motivation through the power of story. In the spirit of gratitude, I just want to take the time to make a special shout out to all my power plugs out there. These are the people who are consistently plugging into the power narrative. They are downloading the podcast. They're liking, commenting. They're hitting that notification bell. I just want to say thank you to all my power plugs out there, no matter where you're from. Whether you're from the U.S., thank you. Whether you're my power plugs out there in Ireland or Latvia or the Russian Federation or wherever you're from, the message is getting out there and we can change the narrative. Keep plugging in. Thank you. Sometimes we think we're connected to the right source. Our intentions are right. We're doing the right thing for the right reason and we are out to do what it is that we set our minds to do and nothing. And we wonder why aren't things working the way that they should. You check your list of connections and everything's connected and still nothing. Don't be alarmed. What could be the problem is we are sending and receiving mixed signals. Often what we don't realize is that signals are competing for priority. Let's plug in. I have a Bluetooth speaker and I had that speaker set up to my phone to play my music and everything was going great until I opened up my computer to do some work and all of a sudden my music stopped. I was looking around, what's going on? Is this the batteries fine? No, everything's plugged in. What it was, was originally that speaker was connected to my computer. My computer was the default selection. We'll get back to that word later. It interrupted the signal that was coming from the desired device. While still connected to multiple devices, the phone just won't compete. In order for my music to start playing again, all I had to do was disconnect from the undesired device. What we are sometimes unaware of is when we try to make the right moves for growth, we stifle ourselves because of mixed signals. In the last chapter, we discussed the bigger picture. And although you may be able to see it, in order to stay connected to it, what you have to do is watch your mouth and consider the source. This very podcast is called The Power Narrative. See, first we have to change our relationship with words. And once we change our relationship with words, we can then change the story that we are telling about our lives. An extremely interesting definition of the word default is this. An adopted, pre-selected option when no other option is selected by the user. We may have adopted a pre-selected way of speaking and thinking programmed by those before us or from the example of those that we're surrounded by to where we think it's the only available option. This is a huge lie. If the results of that way produce an outcome that leaves you feeling powerless, I suggest to you that you better disconnect from that source and find a better way. Find a way to dispel the lies that we speak over our lives that rob us of our power and our authority. Then make a conscious effort to be amplifiers of this higher signal. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. We have to first be aware of the words that we're speaking. Then we have to understand why we're speaking them. 
And then we have to understand their meanings, their true meanings, and then moving forward, be very intentional about what we speak. I used to say that we speak words of no effect. I could not have been more wrong. We underestimate the power of our words and then in doing so increase the likelihood of us harming ourselves and those around us. It's not enough to just hear what we say. We have to watch what we say. And there's a double meaning to this. Of course, we're supposed to be mindful, but we also have to watch what our words produce. Your words could be health to somebody's bones or they could be a poisonous venom. If you haven't watched season one, the chapter called See and Say, check it out because I go very in depth into the power of our words. Watch it. Now, connect this dot. There is a huge difference between profanity and curse words, but we're conditioned to believe that they're one and the same. It's not true. Some of us don't use profanity at all, but we curse on a regular basis. And the worst part about it is we don't even realize it. Quick example. Let's examine the phrase, shame on you. The words by themselves are just mere words. There's no profanity involved. But now let's attach that phrase to a critical mistake that we've made that we already feel terrible about coming from the mouth of an authority figure that we highly respect. Now we feel the compound effect and the immense power of this phrase. And now it becomes a curse. How many of us have existed underneath the weight of shame that has been placed upon us from our youth? And we hear the justification for slanderous, harmful speech with the phrase, don't be so sensitive. And we have this state in our society of desensitized people from harmful, hateful speech. Curse words. In order to see the bigger picture in your life, there's one simple rule that you can follow. And it's this, don't be little when you're big. There are people that will attempt to belittle you. And the resentment that can come from that form of treatment can cause you to also belittle others. Being picked on, being made fun of, being put down can cause you to then be the first one to do the same thing to someone else before they have a chance to do it to you. Belittling cycles of behavior are then taught to our children, browbeating them, capitalizing on their mistakes in their efforts to grow and learn. And what ends up happening is we stunt their growth with our harshness, with our lack of patience through our displays of abuse of power and intimidation, we teach them to fear instead of being courageous, to doubt instead of believe. We teach them to worry instead of trust. And then we fail to protect them when society does the same thing. And one of my favorite stories of a parent who did the exact opposite was an interview that I saw long ago with 14 year old Venus Williams. The man who was interviewing her was subtly trying to place doubt in her mind about her abilities and her father stepped in, stopped it and checked the situation. You have to be aware of this anti energy that comes to change your focus from a higher level to a lower level, trying to kill your vibe. In other words, that's the short way for saying an energy that comes to lower, dampen or kill your vibrational energy. If you pay close attention, you'll see that this interviewer tried to do this with his words. Her father 
did three things. First, he blocked the subtle verbal attack. Then he protected her confidence. He then channeled positive energy back into her by speaking a prophetic word over her life, speaking of the champion that she would become years after this interviewer would no longer even be standing. You have to start telling a different story. This doesn't change what happened. It doesn't change what occurred, but you find the wherewithal to make everything that occurred count for something. You can come up out the same mud as the next person and you can excel where someone else doesn't. Nine times out of 10, it's how you looked at your plight and what you said to yourself about your situation that makes all the difference in the world. I'm reminded of another interview by the late great Malcolm X where he asked the audience, who taught you to hate yourself? Now you may be sitting there saying, I don't hate myself, I love myself. My next question then is, why do you stay connected to a source that prevents you from getting where it is that you really need to be? We're gonna end with another story from scripture. It's a very sad but interesting story that we can learn from about a man named Saul who would become the first king of Israel. One day, Saul met up with the prophet of God thinking that he was only coming to him in order to ask and receive the answer to where his father's missing livestock had ran off to. But God previously told his prophet that Saul was coming and that this would be the man that would be anointed as king, but he would need some heavy convincing. Pay very close attention to Saul's response about the news of his new role. He basically told the prophet, <laughs> you must have the wrong guy because I am from the smallest tribe of Israel and out of the smallest tribe, I am from the smallest family. Ain't no way. All you hear is lack and lack is his default position. So the prophet says, no, no, trust me. I'm going to lay out the beginning of the vision that God has for the trajectory of your life. There are four things as you leave here that are going to happen on your way home. Those four things are going to change your life and you're going to be a different person. Just as the prophet said, those four things happened and it changed Saul's life. He became a different person. The issue is he failed to disconnect from his default way of thinking. And when the big test came, he relied on the default position and failed to follow the instructions that would have cemented his legacy as the king of Israel. Saul, a big man, would continue to default and choose to belittle himself rather than follow the instructions given to him by the creator in order for him to stay connected to the bigger picture. And it cost him everything. You see, God's not going to compete with any other signals. God will continue to be consistent, but allow you to choose. So the challenge question is this. Will you discount this message and continue to do what you've always done just because it's what you're familiar with? Or will you take notice of and activate the power that comes along with changing the way that you speak, dispelling the negativity and stay connected to the bigger picture of your life? To change the narrative in your life, take the next step 
invest in yourself and book a life strategy coaching session with me at www.beliefinteriordesign.com. Let's start the journey of making belief reality.